and I'm at Barn Yarns and I'm going to show you how to make this lovely lacy bowl by Free Machine Embroidering on soluble fabric. Look at that. So the Aquatics Avalon is the one that's very flimsy. It's a bit like a, a flimsy shower curtain and it does need to be used double because otherwise it's going to tear. But it's great when you wash it out because it washes out really, really easily in cold water. And the advantage as well is because you're using two layers, you can sandwich things in between. And I'm going to show you this great idea of making a bowl. So what you need is a round hoop. Now, I've just decided that I'm going to make my bowl on this Indian Cuisine Condiments Bowl. Now, it's made of stainless steel, so, but you could choose something that's glass or... Um, as someone kindly pointed out, this does look like the top of a flask. But uh, have a look around, you'll, you'll find something appropriate. But what I like about this bowl is that it's, it's quite straight sided. So when you have to work out what size hoop to do, my suggestion is you measure from here over the top and down the other side. And this is seven inches. So I have got an eight inch, eight inch hoop here. And what that gives me is a little bit of leeway around the edge and so I know that when I do my sewing in here and we place it over the bowl I'm going to have plenty of, of embroidery that's going to cover the bowl. So measure your item and then choose a hoop that's an inch bigger. Okay, so what I'm going to do with this one is I'm going to slacken the screw, remove my inner hoop and place one square of Avalon film there. And with soluble fabric, you do need to make sure that all the stitches interlink. But what you can do with this bowl is because I'm gonna trap some fibers and some bits of exciting things inside, you're not going to need as many stitches as you would if you didn't have those fibers in between. So it's quite good, you don't need to do as much stitching, not as much work. But you just need to be mindful that you don't get carried away. It's very tempting, and I'm guilty of doing this myself, that when you get your stash out and you see, oh, that's pretty, oh, I'll have a bit of that. And uh, before you know it, you've kind of really got this mound going on. And if you put too much in the middle, when you wash it, the slight residue from the soluble fabric that we've got, we're going to use that to stiffen the bowl. And if you have too much fluff and stuff, it, there's not going to be enough residue in the soluble to make it stiff. So try not to get too carried away and try not to make too big a mountain. So I'm using merino wool tops here. So you could use some merino wool. You can use some other wool as well. But I'm just pulling a little bit out and I'm just placing it on, on here. So spread it out a bit. It's quite quite thin there. It's just a layer. In fact, actually, I'll put it that way so the wispiness is there. But there's all sorts of things you could use. You could use silk tops. You could use other fibres. You could use particularly hairy wool. And I'm keeping everything within my hoop. Don't uh, go outside your hoop, as it were. Do there. Let's have a look. Great. And then what I'm going to do is use another colour. And again with my merino wool, I just prise it apart a little bit. Just just putting some different colour in there. I just think these are lovely, lovely colours to use. This sort of mint green and lilac and some other extra bits and pieces going on. you can do with merino wool is if you pull some off you can actually roll it into a little ball and these can be used to create roses so you can just drop these little balls anywhere you like now when you're looking and working on your design if you think of your bowl that's quite a bit of the base so the, that's not going to show, that's the underside. So there's no point in doing any elaborate decoration there. And there's no point in either doing any decoration right on the edge either because you're not going to be sewing there. So the main part of your decoration is in this section of the hoop. So if you just pop a few balls, 
and I'm just rolling them quite tightly with my fingertips. I don't need to wet it. I don't need to think, oh, it's like wet felting when you're making felted balls. It's just literally getting the, the wool quite tightly. So there's all my little balls done and another thing you can do is add some bits of wool to it. So I've got this lovely yellow and I'm just going to cut some lengths of wool just kind of coming out from the centre. So this could be a bit like adding strips of pepper to your pizza. Oops. Try to kind of be mindful where the centre is, right? We don't want to go over the edge. Let's drop that out of the way. I kind of moved over a bit, but that's uh, okay. in there but that's that's okay I think or shall I just trim that off I think I might just trim that off okay so when you've done that another thing you can do because we've got this lovely surface layer of fibers there things aren't going to drop through you can always sprinkle some sequins on which are great adds a little bit of twinkle to your bowl so I've got these lovely little iridescent ones and I'm just going to drop those from a height so again just be Mindful of the bottom of the bowl, no point in covering the sequins there. So let's just drop these on. And flat backed ones, or sorry, flat sequins are fine. And yes, your machine will sew through them. So that's all good. So you can use some different colours. I'm just echoing the colours that I've used so far. Now some of these will just get lost altogether, so you can be a little bit over generous. But I think small sequins you can put quite a few on. Now I've also got some yellow ones. Now these are on a strip so I need to just cut those off. So if you just do that you can just pull those sequins off and just drop those and I'll probably just put a few of those in each of those sections. So this is like dropping your olives on your pizza really. I'm sure you've got other things that you can use. Sandwich in between and that's the beauty of using this Avalon because it's it's thin and you can trap fine things in between. So let's just have a little look. I think we're quite happy with the positioning of that. And then you're ready to put your lid on. Now, you do have to be quite careful when you put the lid on. I liken it to putting an apple pie lid on a pie. So what you don't want to do is to misfire because if you put it down and it's not in the right place, if you lift it up, you're going to lock, dislodge all this lovely work that you've done. So before you put the lid on, just make sure that you've got soluble all the way around the hoop. I haven't accidentally knocked it. It's very easy when you're working, you're so busy chopping and, and pulling out bits and pieces that you can knock this and it might be very close to the edge. But I'm quite happy that I've got enough soluble fabric around. So what I'm going to do is get my second layer and then with a deep breath, and that's another thing, try not to breathe too heavily on your work, otherwise you might blow all the bits and pieces. So just go for it and layer it down. Now, there'll be some air trapped. So a little trick, and actually it looks as if I'm doing magic, but it's, it's not like that. Put your arm through, squish it, then put the inner hoop in, and that will just help get rid of some of that air because we want to have it like that, but then we also want to pull it up so it's nice and tight and these pieces are less likely to move about. So once you've done that, let's tighten the screw and the easiest way to do that is if you turn it round and come off the table. So come with me to the end of the table. There we are. I haven't needed to lift it up and I'm able to tighten that screw. So I'm tightening the screw, I'm going to push it back and then now I'm going to hold on to my inner hoop and pull both layers of soluble fabric, this lovely Avalon, upright. So let's go around and you'll find that it kind of stretches and it might be, you see we're losing that sequin, 
but that's all okay. So just pull it upright. Okay, so you can see some of the creases are going. But we're going to need to tighten that hoop again. So just go around once. And the next thing you need to do, let's just uh, oh, do that bit. Let's push it off the table again and tighten that screw. So come round off the table and really go for it. Tighten it as tight as you can. You can hear it squeaking. And just go around again and get a couple of pins. I would use the pins that don't have a head on. And using your tape measure, work out where the halfway mark is and pop a pin in. Okay. And then turn it round and do the same the other side. And then you've got the bottom. And you can see actually my, my bits and pieces have moved a bit. But that's not going to matter too much because we're going to incorporate that. And the very middle of that is going to be the base of your bowl. So what I'm going to do in a moment is take it over to the sewing machine. I've already threaded it up with a beautiful variegated thread. And I'm going to do some stitches. I'm going to start in the middle and I'm going to come out. And I'm going to just do some gentle meandering, not masses and masses of stitching, but just gentle meandering so that it all kind of joins, but in a, in a wider design. And when it comes to coming near the edge, I'm not gonna have very many stitches. And the reason for that is this bowl is quite straight sided. And when you stitch this and you curve it around the bowl, if I had a lot of stitches around the edge, as I tried to get that to go around the bowl, what it would do, it would be fluted and I want this flat. So I may have quite a few stitches here, but they peter out as they come out towards the edge. So what I'm going to do is do my, if you like, background stitching in the variegated thread. And then just to give it a little bit of extra detail and a little bit of interest, I'm going to use a contrasting colour and do some decoration. So let's go over to the sewing machine and get started. We're all ready to machine embroider. I've got my open-toed free machine embroidery foot on and I've lowered my feed dogs. So over we go and I'm just going to mark the centre actually in stitches. So we've marked it with pins. So the way to do it is to get your needle in the fabric. So I'm just going to press the needle in the fabric and bring up the bobbin thread. There we are. Pop the needle back in again and I'm just going to do a few little stitches which will enable me to mark where the center is. So um, just a few stitches. So I'm just gonna gently hop over those pins. So they're a bit tricky, those pins. But by hopping from side to side, I'm sort of doing a stitched cross. And what that will enable me to do is to remove the pins and then we can sew in a relaxed fashion. So working from the center, I'm doing some free machine embroidery. And I'm kind of interlinking it, but really loosely because you've got the beauty of these threads and fibers underneath. So I don't need to do as much stitching as I would if I didn't have that. So I'm just going to do this stitching. Bearing in mind, I don't want to do too much stitching at the base. The middle part of the bowl is about here. And then as I come towards the edge, I'm literally just going to do some straight stitches and back again. Remember I said about not having too many stitches near the edge. So something like that is absolutely fine. You can sew over the sequins. You can just couch those little blobs in. And I'll show you what we're going to do with those blobs in a moment. We're just sewing through the sequins and coming out and doing those straight stitches. So stitching like this is lovely. You don't need to 
do too much more than that. I'm just going to couch down a few of those sequins. You can hear and see that they're quite happy being sewn. And those stripes have kind of divided our pizza a bit, but this is quite a nice bit of stitching. So the main body of the stitching is here. When I come to the edges, there isn't much stitching, and I'm going to make my way around the whole of that piece and continue in that fashion. So there we are, that's the background all stitched. So you can see I've used this lovely variegated thread and you can see the colour change and there's more stitching here and I've petered out near the ends and that's all good. So I've now put a black viscose thread in the machine, top and bottom, and I'm going to do some details. I'm going to start in the middle and I'm going to show you how to stitch a leaf detail and also how to go over these little blobs of merino. But don't forget we've got those lovely fibres underneath. So go back. If you're not confident going backwards, of course turn your work round and then you can actually do your leaves that way. So leaf. So just fill it in and then do a leaf on the other side. Down, down, and do another leaf. Now, I'm not going to go all the way down to the middle doing leaves because don't forget that is near the base of the bowl. So this is probably going to be my last leaf. Do one on the other side. down with a straight line and of course that starting thread I can cut off so let's just turn that around and have a look and see if we like the look of that yet yeah, so we've got some leaves there so that's so I've stitched all the black leaves and now what I want to show you is how to enhance these little blobs of merino wool I want to show you how you can turn those into roses and I wouldn't worry necessarily the fact that the leaves are a bit uneven at the moment I deliberately stitched them in between a piece of yellow wool. So let's go over to the machine and I've got a grey thread in there and let's see how we enhance the merino wool. So I'm going to go round, start in the middle of the sequin there, I'm actually going to go right on the edge of the merino wool all the way around and then I'm going to do a spiral to the inside and then I'm going to go back over myself now in my bobbin thread I've got that variegated so you can just see that coming through. But there's a little spiral there which is great. And so what I'm going to do is then just travel, it's about if you go over here to another one, and just do another little rose, do a little spiral, go back over yourself. And that way you're just enhancing these roses. There we are. If you look at the roses you can see that I've gone over those and just enhanced those with a few curls. So we're now ready to take this out of the hoop, cut away the surplus and wash it and turn it in to a lovely bowl. So again, just flip out the inner hoop and we just need to cut away the surplus. So I realised with Avalon film you can actually tear it, it's great, but if you don't want to be as brutal as this, you can actually cut it. When you've got that ready, Get your bowl of water. So I'm going to dunk this. Control how much soluble residue I have because that's going to help keep my bowl stiff. And then what I'm going to do is drape it over here, pull it, peg it in place and get a bit of blow dry. So you can see when I do that with it, if I'd done an awful lot of stitches, there would be a lot of overlapping, but we're going to position that once it's wet. So the thing to do is to have something to balance it on. I've just got a can of deodorant, but you'll see why we need that in a moment. So the first thing to do is just to dunk it into cold water. I like to use tepid water because it's just not so harsh in your hands. So I've dunked it once and I'm just sort of squeezing and 
moving out and you can see that because I've got those fibres there that's giving it some structure to the bowl and it didn't matter that all my stitches didn't interlink so it's feeling a bit gloopy but we want it to be quite sticky because that's going to make it nice and stiff but what we also want is just to make sure the ends don't have too much soluble residue in it because we don't want it looking sticky so just I'm just almost doing it by feel really and I appreciate that that might not come across in the video but you're going to feel for these the more bowls you do but you do want some stickiness in there to keep it stiff. What we're going to do is position that over the bowl like that and before we get too carried away just try to work out where we need to be and you can see that we've got some there and then now what you can do is work out the positioning of everything so there's no overlapping I quite like these scraggy ends look at that we're gonna have this dainty little sequin hanging on for dear life with a bit of thread so just smooth it out that's working out quite all right so we've got a bit of an overlap so just have a look at that see if you need to straighten that out likewise with that sequin and when you're quite happy with it what I like to do and get some pegs and just put a few pegs in place and that will just help with blow drying it's not going to move too much and that's why you'll notice that the can that I'm balancing it on is a deodorant can and it means I can put these pegs in it and I've got space so just go around a bit now I'm blow drying it if you were going to leave it to dry naturally you definitely need to cover your bowl with cling film otherwise you'd never get it off we are blow drying it so there's no cling film on here and as well because I'm blow drying it if I've got cling film on it not only would the cling film sort of stick in the heat it's just unnecessary so after you've blow dried it for a bit take the pegs off and blow dry around the edge and what we need to do is get it a little bit more dry and then we need to wiggle it and take it off so I'm just going to blow dry a bit more and then we'll see how we get on in a few moments so when you've blow dried that and it really is quite dry, you want to make sure that you can wiggle it and then you're able to take the bowl out. So just to give it a little bit of a blow dry inside, so do that. Now, I really like the way that that edge is quite thready and not a cut edge but if you found that that was just a little bit too much of course you could trim trim those bits and pieces but now you see it all comes together so that is dry and the slight residue from the soluble fabric is helping to keep it shape but what I would do is make that stiffer by painting watered down PVA so 50% PVA 50% water and I would brush that on the inside and leave it to dry and that will help keep its shape but if you get a battery operated tea light and pop that in there just how pretty does that look perfect to have on your table great for a wedding and if you have stiffened it you can actually put some favors in there as well but so so pretty and that's how you make a bowl